and they will get it back. Like Prophet Muhammad, he was a pirate. Hello, everybody, and peace of Christ to all of you. I, uh, as you see, I'm always on time. Uh, 17 minutes after the time, this is nothing in the Arabian Peninsula, you know. I mean, Allah, he sent Muhammad 600 years after Jesus. Why? Because uh, uh, the Christian, they thought Jesus was crucified. So it took him 600 years to find somebody. I mean, he looked in the warehouse, who I will send, who I will send. He looked, he kept looking, he could not find someone until 600 years after. Because what he can do, I mean, he have a scrap. And what you can get between the scrap, you will not find Macy's, you know. You will find uh, Muhammad 600 years after. Are your police of Qatar? I don't even put them in my socks. I'm not wearing socks, by the way, even if it's so cold. Do you know why? Christian Prince, I know why. Why? Because you are an infidel and you are always hot. Mm. Don't say that to your wife, Zach and Nag. She will leave you. Hey Muslims, don't listen to Zakir Naik. He just said I'm very hot because I'm an infidel. Hmm. Hey, by the way, when Macy's he made you touch the cup and take a picture with it. Was it hot because he was holding it? Unbelievable. Today we are celebrating that the three Christian nations, as usual, they are the winners, even though the Muslims, they try their best to make this game about religion. You know, for us as a Christian, we don't care really. I mean, this is even silly to make it about God. But for me, I like this guy, Macy's. Even though I don't know him, I never actually, I never, I don't, I don't, I don't watch football, I don't care for football. But I notice each time, as been told, that when he play or he got a goal, he draw the cross in his face. Beautiful. You see, and then he says, I know that God is with us. So this person is a true believer. And if you are a believer, God will be with you. In the same time, I was really upset that the French team, as I've been told, they never even pray once during the game or before the game. So how you will win? Yeah, you got what you deserve. Maybe if you pray, you know, to the Lord, appreciation, maybe you will have the cup in your hand. Next time you learn, my friend. Uh, prayer is very, very, very important. And I will support those who they are believers. I don't care for the team. I don't care if it's Argentina, France. Actually, I wanted the French to win because I noticed there is many of them, they are African, and that would be a, a victory for Africa. I like to support the African people. But sadly, not even one of them he pray. I don't know if I'm wrong. Uh, always, always, you know, countries like Qatar, which is a, the prince is a criminal. He's an, by the way, those are not prince and princes. They call them prince, your highness, thanks to the oil and the gas. Those are Bedouin. They used to live in the tent. And I am an Arab and I know my people. Those have nothing to do. I mean, this country is not even exist. But the first time this country exists, 1972, I think. 1972. So this is like less, less than 50 years country. Well, how those people become, became royal? This country never exists too, as a country. Uh, but thanks to the, the, the British intelligence and Her Majesty, the Queen of England, they decide to make him a family with the, the same as the Saudi, the same as the Jordanian kings. You know, they made them kings and princes. But the truth is, those are nothing to do with highness. Uh, somebody saying French teams has a lot of Abdul in their teams. No, that's not true. I checked the names. I checked the names. That's not true. There's one, his name is Ibrahimu, and I think he is not a Muslim, still last name. And, you know, actually, even if there is a Muslims who they are pray, playing in our side, that is even more humility to Allah. I mean, the team making us, the Muslim making us win. That would be wonderful. That would be even better. Uh, uh, you know, in the last uh, uh, two weeks, the, the Qatari government, who they are very corrupt, very evil, very, I mean, you see this stadium, people are celebrating, but do you know how many people die there from the poor countries? 
Just a few days ago, we heard the news about the European Union, the police. They launched an investigation and they found that the Qatari government, they are involved in a bribe, big deal. And the bribe is involved in many things. All of them, they lead to, to lead to one thing, to make Qatar a powerful country. Even this is a small, tiny country. I mean, that the whole nation is less than a population of a building in China. How come those people, they want to be uh, like a watch member in the European Parliament? Who are you? I mean, this is not Brazil. I mean, Indonesia, they have a 300 million or 200 million uh, citizen. I can say, okay, give them a chair to watch. But Qatar, who is Qatar? Why Qatar? They start investing their money in bribing everybody. And you know what? There's many, they worship money. Their God is money. Millions and millions of dollars, houses, cars. And not only that, we found that even Morocco is involved in the bribe. All of them, they seek one thing, power, control, authority, and to make their image look better. So they look around them, how we can our image look better? Everybody knows that we have zero human right. Everybody knows how evil this government is. Everyone knows how filthy every single individual leader in the Middle East. Everyone knows that those people, they have zero ethic. And that's why they bribe. Even the religious one of them, of those governments, is selling drugs. As an example, what is number one income for a Taliban? Drugs. What is number one income for Iran and Hezbollah? Drugs. Pakistan? Drugs. Drugs. And now they thought they can bribe everybody. And actually, Qatar got the World Cup to be in Qatar by bribe. Even that is a bribe. This is telling you how filthy this religion. And remember, the prince of Qatar, he is very religious. I mean, come on, he invited Zakir Naik. Don't talk now. Don't talk. No. To Qatar. And in the news, they say Qatar providing introduction to Islam. Well, let me provide you introduction to Islam. In Islam, you can bribe. You can lie to your family, to your wife, to your friends, and to your enemies. Who is left? Let me introduce you to Islam. In Islamic countries, there is no justice. In Islamic countries, have zero human right. In Islamic countries, a human are not a human. Let me introduce you to Islam. And then when you go there, you sit in the stadium. When you play with the Muslim team, you will find that the whole stadium is Muslims, supporting the team, trying to intimidate you so you will become a loser. And this is why this time the Muslim teams were able to accomplish way better than before. They start shouting, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. The terrorists shouting so they can intimidate the team in the ground and support the Muslim team. Look at this scumbag. Him and his family and his mother. I mean, those people, they even they put their grandfather in jail and he disappeared. This guy, he make his brother disappear. By the way, he is not even the crown prince. It was his brother. What, what happened to the brother? His name is Jasim. Is gone with the wind. European Parliament, they issue an order to investigate Qatar uh, scandal 
and they freeze any process for promoting Qatar between European Union. And then the embassy of Qatar, they posted a post, I'm trying to find it, but this is in Arabic, maybe they have one in English. Uh, they posted uh, uh, a post saying, European Union should remember that we are the one who stabilize the energy security. So they are threatening them. If you wanna go after us for we are corrupt and we are filthy and we are liars and we are following the steps of Prophet Muhammad. Well, you know what? Remember, you are buying gas from it. But I say to Qatar, I challenge you to do something about it because your money, all of it is there. You know, one of the things about Muslim countries and Muslim dictators, all their money is in Europe. So if you try to, you know, to break their hands, they can break your balls. They can crush it. All your money is there. All your investment is there. And they can take it in a second. So we know the game. And we know how they play. With all the support of the money and the cheating and the corruption and the bribes, still they lost miserably. How do you feel when Macy's he draw the cross in his face in the middle of Qatar and the Muslim Brotherhood are watching Macy's praying to Jesus making the cross in his face? How does it feel Muslims? In your land, in your stadium and then so-called prince he gave the World Cup Golden Cup to Macy's. Willingly or unwillingly, we took it. And this is the last time you will touch it. You did not touch it because huh, you, you know, I mean, <laughs> you store it in the warehouse. How many of you took a picture with it, by the way? Hey, Macy's, can you please give them the cup for five minutes so they can take a picture with it? I mean, please, come on. I'm so glad that he did. He gave them the cup. So, hey, hey Moroccan, come on here. Just come on, take a, take a selfie, man. Hey, take a selfie. It's okay, I want to charge you. It's mine, but I will let you use it, right? Yeah, takbir. Takbir. And today, I was watching the news and Al Arabiya TV, they were talking about a human right in Iran. You know, I like it when the Saudis speak about a human right. I mean, come on. Who can beat the Saudi in human right? In Saudi Arabia, you have the right to be butchered. You have the right to be kidnapped. You have the right to stay silent. You have the right to eat you alive. We have the right, you have the right to be kidnapped even from the West and put you in a box and send you in the shipping of the embassy. I mean, I find it very funny. You see, I wish you guys would speak Arabic. You will die laughing. When you watch those Muslim TVs attacking each other, and by the way, those countries, they are full of love. They love each other. So Qatar, they hate Saudi, Saudi, they hate Qatar, Emirates, they hate uh, Turkey, Turkey, they hate Saudi, Saudi, take, you know, I mean, ever, I mean, this is a religion of love. Uh, in appearance, they support each other, but in reality, they hate each other to death. In fact, if not USA, those people will be killing each other every day. You know, this is what the Arab do. You see what Saddam Hussein did? This was a normal day life for the Arab. They invite, they invade their neighbor, their Arab neighbor. They kill the men, they rape the women, and they take the chicken. But thanks to America, they behaved since Saddam Hussein. But since Saddam Hussein, we have many wars happening in the Middle East, as an example, where right now we have a war in Syria. We have a war in the border with Turkey. We have a war in Libya. We have a war in Somalia. We have a war in Yemen. Uh, we have a war everywhere. I mean, do you, do you know one Muslim country is not involved in war? 
The war in Yemen involved Yemen, Saudi Arabia, Emirat, Sudan, Somalia, Egypt, and many other forces, and Iran for sure. But remember, we love each other and we support each other in the football. If you type right now war between Morocco and Algeria, you will see how much love they have. A lot of love. This religion is the religion of the devil, and this is why they cannot live in peace. And I like it when the prince of Qatar, he gave him a abaya to Macy's. Do you think Macy's will become an Arab when he wear the abaya? You know, I will not be surprised, by the way, if those people did try to bribe him and offer him maybe hundreds of millions of dollars if he converted to Islam. Honestly, I don't know if this is what they offer him or not, but I am sure they try. Because this earthy religion, they are so much interested in celebrities. Anyone he is famous, they invest a lot of money to convert him. I will give you an example. Mickey Mouse Jackson, they call him Michael Jackson, the pervert. Michael Jackson is a pervert who is under the influence of the drugs and is a child molester. As they say, I don't know, I have not what to say anything. Uh, yeah, there is many families accuse him that he was doing things to their kids. But I don't know if it's true or not, God knows. They invited him to the Middle East and they made him stay in a hotel and they told him don't pay. Do shopping as much as you want. Do shopping, stay in the hotel. They gave him the most expensive suite in the hotel, seven stars hotel, not five. Then after six, seven months, they send him a huge bill to pay. The guy, he don't have the money. They told him, if you convert to Islam and the prince of the country, offer, if you convert to Islam, I will pay his bill. If he convert to Islam, I'm going to pay his bill. In fact, as I heard, that Michael Jackson, he thought about it and he was considering it because he is bankrupt, even though he made a lot of money, but he spent too much more than what he made. But he died. Suddenly he died because of a drugs. Those people always, they try to promote their religion by buying celebrity. And if you are for sale, the devil will buy you. This is what they did with Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is a poor guy. He is an African American, as you know. And they told him that, you know, uh, Islam is uh, supporting black. Islam is not like the uh, Christian, the white Christianity. Jesus is white, my friend. Hmm. But the fact, all of us, we knew that Islam is anti-African. We have millions, even in the Quran, proofs and reference how Quran look at black people. Even Allah in the Quran, he says that in the day of judgment, all those who don't follow Muhammad, Allah will make them black. And this is telling us, what is the view of being black in Islam? It is a penalty in Islam to be black. And actually there's a hadith, and we, we mentioned this hadith many times, if you remember, where Muhammad, he said that when Allah created Adam, he hit him in his left his right shoulder and the white came from the white people. And when he created, and then he hit the Adam in his shoulder, left shoulder, and the black people came from there. And then he said to the one came from the right shoulder, you go to heaven and I don't care. And he said to the one who go from the left shoulder, you go to hell and I don't care. So according to the faith in Muhammad, 
you are black because Allah from the beginning, he decided that you are from the left hand. Left hand always mean or left shoulder mean evil. Right mean good. This is why a Muslim isn't even allowed to eat with his left hand. If he do so, shaitan will eat with him. In the front of us, we have a chapter 3, verse 106, and we have many other verses saying the same. Actually, in chapter 32, uh, uh, verse number uh, 82, I think. I'm, I'm getting old, man. It's not good to be old in the age of 17. Let us see. Hold on. Uh... 27, 8, 27, 27. Man. Yeah, 27, 82, correct. It's good to have a good brain, isn't it? I mean, it's there's millions of information in your head, and it's not easy to gather the information in the speed of light. So in chapter 27, verse 82, here it says that there's a beast would come from the ground in the day of judgment, and that beast is sent by Allah, which is very normal. The beast sent the beast. And this beast will recite Quran. But this beast is going to come from the ground and he will have the staff of Moses and the ring of Solomon. And he will hit the one who is a believer in his face and he will make him white. And he will hit the non-believers and he will make him black. This is Ibn Kathir, very famous Muslim scholar which for me is a shish kebab. He's the same as YouTubers in the day to day, but he is the YouTube of uh, in his time, you know. Uh, but he lie a lot. But even when they try, this guy, he, he's trying his best to make Islam look better. But even when he is making Islam look better, he could not hide the evil side of Islam. This is Ibn Kathir. And speaking about the beast who will come in the day of judgment, this beast have a specialty. Will divide mankind into black and white. The white are the Muslims. The black are non-Muslims. Finally, I will be black and my dream will come true. I like to be black. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with being black? Do you see how filthy this garbage religion is? And then the Muslim, they say to you, don't you know that the one, the first one who called for the prayer, his name is Bilal and he was an Ethiopian? <laughs> what they will not tell you that Bilal, he was calling for the prayer because the white Arab, they sleep. He is the slave. He was a slave of Muhammad. He'd been ordered to do it. So the beast would come from the ground and this beast will have the stick of Moses and the ring of Solomon and he will hit you in your face and he will make a black spot in your face first which will spread until all your face and later your body will become black. It's in the front of you. Allah will recognize the bad and the good from their color. Black and white. It's in the front of your eyes. If you think I'm lying, go check it out. If you think I am lying, what do you do? You check it out. Anything I say to you, anything I show you, please do me a favor. Check it out. Shall we? This is Islam, my friend. Very evil. Very filthy. When the Muslims, Muhammad, he want to go to war, so he enforced his slaves, who they are black, to fight for him. It's not a choice. You are a slave. And Bilal was a strong man, you know, we know that African, 
Many of them, they have a very good physique and they are very fit. So he made him a commander, but not because <laughs> he is a person who favored the Arab, sorry, the black. So those Muslims, they come to Muhammad, he says, huh, what? An Ethiopian, he will become our leader? Muhammad, he say, you obey your master, which I hire, your leader in the war, even if he is an Ethiopian and he is a raising head. Can you believe it? He's making fun of the way the black people look like. And by the way, maybe Christian Prince is lying. Let us check it out. Maybe it's not true. Maybe this is Da'if. As you see, it says Sahih. Sahih. This is Al-Bukhari. Even, even if he look like You know, if Muhammad, he stopped here, and he said, uh, if he is black, no, he said, even if he was an Ethiopian black, and the word Habashi in Arabic, used for, uh, to mean from Ethiopia and to you to be black in the same time. So this is why the Muslims in translation, they said black between two brackets. Even if he's an Ethiopian black slave, whose head looks like a raisin. Do you see it? He's making fun of how they look like. It's in the front of you. Different hadith which is we mentioned to you, let me post it in the chat, so people will not say, in case you are, uh, if you case you are an African, my friend, this hadith is very important for you, you should have it. I advise you to save it. Open the link I just posted for you and read. This is who is Muhammad, the devil himself. This is a very authentic hadith from Sahih al-Turmudi. And Muhammad is saying, Allah Messenger, peace be upon him. Muslim, they pray on him, by the way. In Arabic, it doesn't say peace be upon him. It says, Allah pray on him, not peace be upon him. They lie in translation. He said, Allah created Adam when he had to create him, and he struck his right shoulder, and there emitted from it white of spring, as if they were white ants, he struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it black of spring as if it were shirkal. He then said to those who they are been emitted from the right shoulder for paradise, I don't mind. And for those who they are emitted from the left shoulder, they are for hell and I don't mind. In fact, the translation is not true. It says, Wala ubali, which means, and I don't care. Do you see it? And this is a very, very well-known Muslim website, Al Alm. This is not a Christian website. This is not a Jewish website. This is not a Hindu. And who care about the website? Check the numbers. We are showing you the numbers of the Hadith. We are showing you their translation. Those are the people they are trying to fool the African and European, the white and the, and the Asian and everybody, saying that Islam is religion for everybody. What about Muhammad? What he said about the Asian? How he spoke about the Asian?
If you read how he speak about the Asian, you will see how disgusting this filthy man is. In fact, Muhammad, he taught his followers, Gag Gog and Magog, which is according to Islam is the most evil people ever. They are creatures of evil. According to Muhammad, they are Asian. Let us see some reference. You know, we don't like to say things. Many people, they make speeches, right? We don't do that. Here, I say it. Even it might sometime, uh, you know, like not be easy. I mean, because, you, you know, we are, we are live on air. And I don't really prepare for what the topic. Whatever the Lord he gave me, I say. I heard Allah Messenger saying, Near the hour will fight people who will wear hairy shoes, and you will also fight people with the flat faces like shield. The Prophet said the hour will not be established till you fight with people wearing shoes made of hair, and the hour will not be established if you fight with people who their faces like shield coated with leather. Abu Huraira added, they will be small eyed, flat noses, and their faces will look like a shield coated with leather. <laughs> Do you think that the Asian, they will be the most enemy to Allah. He do not know that now the biggest Muslim country in the world is Indonesia. He do not know. He said to them, don't fight the Turkish because those are Asian too. And he considered Turkish are Gog and Magog. He do not know that the Turkish one day they will become Muslims. <laughs> 